really close to you. All right. Are you good now? Yes. All right. So, welcome to my uh, Dragon Master, how to enter Dragon Master 101. I'm not going to be super complicated. We're just going to try and keep it to what you need to have on your sheet and then some tips and tricks to score a little bit better. So, right here, and I will be including this on the internet, uh, hopefully getting a file uh, to post alongside this video so that you can see this wonderful sheet of paper that I imagine you can't see on that resolution. So. When you're entering a Dragon Master, if you should always put your name, and guess what? People forget to do that. Please don't. Uh, specifically by your org number. Uh, the name of the piece you're entering, which also seems really obvious. People don't ever do that, ever. Most people don't do that. Uh, the category. If you don't know what category your piece should go into, seek assistance. Do not blindly guess because that category may have rules or may be judged differently. For instance, if I had made this, I'm going to just do this. Yeah, sure. If I had made this lovely water bottle, Ooh. it is very functional. Ah. Uh, it's not super pretty. If I put this in as a 3D art piece, it's not going to score well because it's not pretty. But if you put it in owl and it is well constructed, then it will score better than it would otherwise in the art piece. So knowing what category your thing is supposed to be entered into will help you significantly on your scores. If you don't know, ask the person running the Dragon Master. If they don't know, they will open a corpora. <laughs> Uh, also keep in mind that specialty tournaments, so not Dragon Master, but specialty ones, may have different rules. Always read the rules of the tournament when they are presented. Subcategory is another thing. Uh, a category is garb, but that's a very broad category. It is also broken down into subcategories in most corporas. Uh, field garb, court garb, and sometimes monster garb. Uh, as well as garb accessory, like a headband or a bag. So knowing your subcategory also important for the judges because I'm going to judge something slightly differently if it's court garb versus field garb. Court garb is going to require more finishing touches and to be pretty whereas field garb is going to need to be rough and tumble. It's going to be able to got to stand up to crawling on your knees across a des desert field. Now Part of the thing that you should be doing when you put in an entry is to describe materials you used and tools you used. So for instance, if you submit an art piece, is that piece of art produced by hand? If so, what did you use? Did you use pens, pencils, uh, Crayola markers and Crayola crayons because you wanted to draw something like a five-year-old? Cool. Um, but those tools make a difference. Did you use a computer, which is a valid tool? If you use a computer, what software program did you use? This also goes for things like designing chain mail or embroidery. Did you design that by hand, freehand, or did you design it using a tool you bought on the internet? Those are important for judges to know. Another important thing is to describe your piece. Now this comes in two things. The first is to physically describe it. So if I was doing this red outfit, I would say red outfit with blue insert, hand embroidered gray sleeves. This allows the judges to make sure there aren't mistakes. Because sometimes people will name a piece red garb and have no more descriptors. And then there are seven pieces of red garb put in and somewhere along the line, the papers got switched. And now the judges are stressed out, <laughs> like a lot. So please, a little more of a detailed description will save the judges should papers get misplaced. It will also show that you know a little bit more about your piece and is your chance to put in little fun trinkets. Like for instance, um, I'm just gonna come a little closer to the camera now. This fun thing over here is roughly akin to my character's holy symbol for the god she follows in character. Having information like that in your write-up 
really helps give the judges a better feel for what you are trying to accomplish, which can actually be very helpful for judges. Now the how it was made, and you might be going, well, I'm not expecting the judges to understand how it was made, and that's okay. I promise you, judges do not know everything as much as some of us would like to pretend they do. Um, if Now, this is a little harder for things like stories or poems, but if you're doing a poem or a story and you're mimicking a specific style, that falls under the how it was made. Otherwise, you're looking at things like, what kind of stitches did you use? Did you use a satin stitch or a, a French seam? Uh, when you were embroidering it, is that machine embroidered? Is it hand embroidered? Because it makes a difference to your score for most judges. It makes a difference for us to know that you also know what you're talking about. It is that chance to show that you did the research when you were submitting this piece. So for instance, on this thing, I have some split stitch and I have some whipped stitch and I have some running stitch and it's all hand embroidered. And having that on the how it was made means that you don't go, oh, well, that's a really nice embroidery piece, but did she actually make that or is it machine? We can't guess at it because it's backed, so we can't see the back to know for sure. So you're taking the guesswork away from the judges. You also may actually teach the judges something. I know nothing about woodworking, nothing at all. So you might start describing your technique and I might go, hey, that's cool, I wanna try it. Uh, and last but not least, this particular thing leaves comments for judges, which is nice. Judges should be commenting. Now, not just inane things like, oh, beautiful work, but helpful things like, hey, clip your seams. Don't leave any loose threads. Um, you fell flat on a note halfway through the song. Uh, support your breath. Things that should help you get better at your craft. That is the point of comments from judges, which means that not all judges leave comments. If they honestly can't make a comment, oh, you submitted this beautiful woodworking piece. It's really pretty, but I don't know. I look up on my phone, what this comment, what this, 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 how you made it says you did. Oh, okay, that's cool, neat, all right. But if a judge doesn't know something, they're not as likely to leave, leave a comment aside from. That's nice, that's pretty. Um, having all of space for all of these things does mean you end up with an entire sheet of paper for every entry. And I know that sounds like a lot. But here's the thing, is that sometimes you can actually boost your mark by giving a better description or a better how it was made. Uh, especially with things like if you're entering poetry and you're putting in a haiku. Your haiku is this big on a piece of paper. But if you, in your description, are explaining, this is the meaning behind this poem, so that we're not guessing, then you're likely to score better. Other tips and tricks for getting a better score. Presentation matters. Oh my God, does it matter? So we will start with, uh, can I just see that sketchbook of yours? Just slide it this what, way. What do, you, what do you need? Just, just a book. Just a book. Just like this. I'm just going to take this. I'm going to hold it pretty far away so you can't see. But if you handed in a sketch and say that this sketch is your, your 2D art entry in a book, you're losing points. Because you didn't take time to make it nice and presentable. If you were doing a performance piece and you have a costume, you will get better points. If you introduce your performance piece, often you will get better points. If you are presenting a poem, now most corporas have it that you need either three to five or whatever extra copies. Basically the idea is so that every judge can read at the same time. But there's nothing stopping you from also submitting among the like read copies is a nice penned up copy. Here is my poem that I made in calligraphy, included as your presentation. Uh, if you serve your food entry, this was delicious by the way, uh, if you serve your food entry on this paper plate like this uh, with plastic forks, 
and you just kind of throw it at the judge and say, here, and then you leave, you're not getting as good marks as if you cut each piece yourself and you dress up the plate like you were at a restaurant. Presentation is very important, especially for a Dragon Master. Less so for CQs where your point is to pass, um, but with Dragon Master, make sure it is presented nicely. Make sure it is finished. That means clip your threads, and I am guilty of the not clipping threads, <laughs> but clip the threads. Uh, make sure that if you have a chance to, especially if it's at an indoor location, iron the garb if it's ironable. Don't take it off of someone's sweaty back after a battle game and then enter it. That's gross. <laughs> Please don't. The dungeons don't want to touch it. <laughs> don't submit a spell ball as a weapon entry that has been rolling around in the mud. Finished and clean. And that's pretty much the end of my mini tutorial. Do we have any questions from the audience? The camera will remain on me, but you can just... So, a uh, question in regards... Can you put an end into two different categories perfect example would be let's say you wrote a poem but you painted it within a painting could it be entered as two not into two categories not usually some corporas include a mixed or a blended category um if it doesn't in the competition or in that corpora speak to the person running it and they will help you decide which it fits into better Okay. Any other questions? For, for example, um, I know garb is one category, um, but could you enter, for example, a piece of field garb, a piece of court garb, and a garb accessory in one tournament? Yes. Okay. Usually. Read the rules of the tournament, though, because every once in a while you get a tournament that's like, you may only submit one per category not subcategory but category those are unusual and dragon masters aren't typically run that way so short answer yes long answer read the rules that just seems like a good idea in general yes <laughs> um, another question is how do we go about seeing the comments that the judges have left because in my previous experience, I've actually been told that I can't. So if they're writing stuff to kind of educate you on your piece on how you can improve. I am not sure why that person said you can't. The idea behind the comments section is for judges to help you improve. But it does depend on the person running the uh, thing. Or it may have been you can't write now because I've been in several competitions where she's like, I still have to enter all the scores. I can't give you your sheets yet. But if the, if the runner isn't letting you see them, there's a problem there. They should, the judges write things for a reason. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you for joining us in How to Enter Dragon Master 101.